Good morning. It is Monday, August 24th, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm choosing to rejoice and be glad in it, and I trust that you are doing the same. How have you been doing um, with fear and, and understanding that as Christians, we're not supposed to um, rely or even depend or even to allow fear to control our lives? How have you been doing? I must say it's been a struggle <laughs> because what happens is when you're so used to saying certain things and when you're so used to doing um, just things that just have nothing to do with fear, it you're so focused on being like, okay, let me make sure I'm not doing this. You know, let me make sure that I'm, you know, not saying using the word scared or whatever, because it's so ingrained in your vocabulary. But I'm going to tell you, if it's something that you're um, trying toward daily to, to remove it from your vocabulary and from your life, it'll happen. It's just going to take time. Just like being perfect in the sight of Christ, just like walking and depending on him completely and wholeheartedly. It's a daily process and God understands that's why he expects you to surrender to him daily. So we're going to move on to the second um, sin that Christians are okay with and it is apathy. Have you ever heard of that word? Apathy. Apathy. Okay. It says that apathy's best friends are passivity and entitlement. Together, they're a vicious threesome. Apathy is really not caring. You know how the famous word that we use a lot is like, whatever, I don't care. You know, we say it a lot, like, whatever, I don't care. And a lot of times, I, I know for myself and for friends that I have, we use apathy as a coping mechanism because when you feel love or when you feel hate, they both tend to dictate um, how you behave. And oftentimes, it can be a little erratic. <laughs> it can be a little outside of your control. But you feel more control when you have apathy toward a thing or a person. But this writer is saying that it is one of the sins that we often overlook. For instance, think about the awesomeness of God. And so when you look at someone and you say, God loves you, it's like we kind of just be like, okay, yeah, I believe it. God loves me and I love him too, you know, and all this great goodness. And we forget that this is God who created heaven and earth. God who placed the stars in the sky. God who who formed something out of nothing. He loves you. Yet we're so nonchalant about it. And oftentimes that um, attitude of apathy and being nonchalant leads us to think that we deserve it, that we're entitled to it, and that it's no big deal. And what it does is dwindles down the power and the awesomeness of God. I, I listened to a song, I believe, um, it was just a worship a part by Israel Houghton, and he was saying, we've taken away the um, magnitude of the word awesome. We don't understand that it means to stand in awe or to gasp at the um, magnitude of something great. But we just say everything is awesome. I know I do. I, I, I use awesome a lot. But it's the same thing with it, it, it ties in with being apathetic to things and uh, taking not taking it seriously, feeling like, OK, whatever. And we have to be careful with that as Christians, because if nothing, if 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 God loving us is just oh, so nothing. Why does why would we why would anybody else want to do it? There has to be something about us that's so special, so supernatural that even people that have no interest in God want it. That's why there can be nothing apathetic associated with it. It cannot be a fly-by-night thing. It has to provoke feeling. It has to provoke change. It has to provoke an extreme reaction because that's who God is. He, 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 he performs and he ministers and he blesses in extreme measures. And so therefore, it's not a whatever thing. The writer says, um, how many cr Christians have you met that left you thinking, wow, I want to be like them, but this should be the norm, right? Am I way off here? Aren't we supposed to be living lives where people want to be like this? Shouldn't you be so transformed by God that people want to ask about your life, even if they hate God? You cannot do that in a state of apathy. 
Okay, in scripture, when men and women truly experience God, everything changes, everything. So that begs the question, apathetic people, have you experienced God? Because in the moment of experiencing his power, you cannot be apathetic. You cannot experience apathy. It cannot be nothing in your life. It will change you. And unfortunately, I know there are people out there who who just don't want to hear it, but you will talk about it all the time. You will talk about God all the time. Everything you're doing, what's going on? Oh, girl, God this and God that. Because you recognize he is this most amazing experience in your life. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, folks. And it's so easy to look over this uh, this um, emotion of apathy, which is really lack of emotion. But it's so easy to look over it as a sin because we feel like, well, you know, it helps me. It helps me be better. It helps me not get too attached to anything. But when it comes to God, it should not be a part of your relationship. You're trying to get attached to him. You're trying to get to a state where you cannot live without him. Because once you do that, you don't have to worry about trying to detach yourself from from um, fleshly and worldly things because you, all of your attachment is to God. And so then you don't have to worry about being apathetic to a man or a woman or a thing so that it won't affect you because God is now in control because you've given it over to him. That's a big one, y'all. And it can be a little complicated. And if you have any questions about it, just ask me because I'm learning with you. And like I said before, this floored me just as much as I'm sure it's getting you. But I encourage you to read it. Nine cents that Christians are okay with. And again, we're just going to go through it one at a time together. And today was apathy. So if that needs to be your prayer that you learn to not allow um God, be so nonchalant in your relationship with God and really experience his awesomeness, um, then you be doing that. You be praying for that. And I'll be praying as well, because I want to make sure that at all times, God knows just how amazing he is in my life. I love you and I'm praying for you. And I trust that you will move forward with clear minds, sincere hearts and obedient footsteps. Go in love. I've been trying to stop it this entire time. It will not let me stop it.